I'm Juliana, and this is the video presentation for the mid-range nursing theory of the peaceful end of life. Unfortunately, our group has dwindled down to a mere two people, so you'll be hearing from me and my groupmate, Clint. This is for Nursing 5120, Theory-Oriented Nursing Practice for Dr. Pamela Simmons. The peaceful end of life theory. The peaceful end of life theory has two authors. The first is Cornelia Ruland, and the second is Shirley Moore. Dr. Ruland received her PhD in nursing in 1998 from a university in Ohio. She is a current resident of Norway, where she is the director of a research program at one of the university hospitals. Dr. Moore received her PhD in nursing in 1993, and she continues her passion for research by educating all levels of collegiate nursing studies. The theory of peaceful end of life is a mid-range nursing theory. What is a mid-range nursing theory? Mid-range nursing theories are very specific, concrete theories. They address phenomenon in a particular group or nursing situation, and they also relate specific nursing actions within a particular patient group or nursing situation. The peaceful end of life theory meets all of these criteria. It is a specific theory about the peaceful end of life. It addresses it in a specific group of terminally ill patients, and it relates specific nursing interventions and outcomes specific to terminally ill patients. Therefore, it is classified as a mid-range nursing theory. Why was this theory developed? This is actually a fun little story. The peaceful end of life theory was actually developed as a result of a requirement for a doctoral course that Dr. Ruland was uh -huh. enrolled in. Interestingly enough, Dr. Moore was one of her faculty at this time. The topic of the end of life was very meaningful to Ruland as she had just completed a project working with cancer nurses from Norway where they defined practice standards for the peaceful end of life. These standards gave Ruland the guidance to develop the theory of peaceful end of life and Dr. Moore just assisted her with the refinement and the completion of this theory. Ruland held interest in the standards of care as she and her counterparts had defined for these terminally ill patients. The focus of nursing care to the terminal patient sparked much needed clarification on the linking processes of nursing care to the end of life outcomes. Ultimately, this theory was developed to provide guidance to nursing practice for the terminal patient. Because they are based on the standards of care, this is the theory construction based on standards of care, a proposed theory of the peaceful end of life. These standards of care that Ruland and her counterparts worked on focus explicitly on linkages between processes and outcomes. The proposed theory of the peaceful end of life is used to describe the process of developing a theory from a standard of care that focused on the peaceful end of life for terminally ill patients. As we all know, because we have been studying theory the entire semester, that all theories have other theoretical sources that they draw from and apply to their theory. There are two main theoretical sources that Ruland and Moore use for this theory. The main one, and the first one we're going to talk about, is the structure, process, and outcome theory by Don Abedian. I think I pronounced that correctly. The end of life theory focuses on the terminally ill patient and all, the, and all members of the affected family, which is considered the structure, that are receiving nursing care. Nursing care is considered the process and the measurable outcomes experienced by the patient and family members, and that is the outcomes portion of this model. The second source we'll talk about is the preference theory by Brandt. The preference theory is simply focused on the patient receiving what he wants. This is applied to the peaceful end of life theory because the desired end of life decision making by terminally ill patients and assessment of outcomes such as relief from pain and other symptoms. So this is it's a simple theory applied, applied to the end of life theory. The empirical evidence and development for this theory, comprehensive review of literature and direct experience by expert nurses give support for the theory's empirical development. The standard of care for the peaceful end of life was developed by Ruland and expert nurses with a minimum of five years experience caring for terminally ill patients. Therefore, we do consider them experts. These standards were based on evidence derived from research, which also adds to the support of the empirical evidence. So, we talked a little bit about this theory. Where would you go find this theory if you wanted to? 
the theory titled Theory Construction Based on Standards of Care, a Proposed Theory of Peace Fund of Life by Cornelia M. Ruland and Shirley M. Moore, was published in the 1998 issue, July-August issue of Nursing Outlook, Volume 46, Number 4. As with all major theories, there are considerations that have to be identified and talked about. Of course, the nursing meta paradigm. All concepts have to be defined. Major assumptions must be identified. Theoretical assertions and propositions. And of course, the important goal of nursing. The nursing meta paradigm of nursing, nursing, person, environment, and health are essential in the addressed phenomenon, peaceful end of life. The standards of care for the theory of peaceful end of life address a very specific nursing practice problem. They incorporate all aspects of the meta paradigm and require holistic care. Now we're going to identify the five concepts and give them and give you the definitions that Ruland and Moore assigned. The first one is not being in pain. And its definition is as simple as not being in pain. They they define it as being free from unpleasant physical pain or any emotional experience resulting from the actual physical pain. So it is, it is what it says. Not being in pain is not being in pain. The second one we'll talk about is the experience of comfort. This is defined as the actual relief felt when discomfort is relieved and the patient experiences a state of contentment and or comfort. The third concept is the experience of dignity and respect. This occurs when the terminally ill patient is treated as an autonomous individual whose values and beliefs are protected and respected. The fourth concept is being at peace. This occurs when the patient is free of anxiety and fear and possesses feelings of calmness and peace. And lastly, the fifth concept and definition is closeness to significant others. It is the last concept and is defined as a connection, it may be physical or emotional, to the caring individuals important to and involved in the patient care. This can extend from the nurse to family members and friends, anyone who is involved in that patient's care, this can apply to. There are two major assumptions that Ruland, Ruland and Moore identify for this theory. The first assumption was that the feelings and experiences felt by a person approaching the end of life are very personal and specific to each individual. As we well know that family members and patients all enter the end of life experience with worries and fears, but they're going to vary to some degree with, with each individual. The second assumption is that in order for the patient approaching the end of life <clears throat> experience, that nursing care is absolutely essential. Nursing care provides the opportunity to observe and interpret signals expressed by the patient in regards to their comfort level, their state of peace, and it allows nurses to select interventions and implement those interventions to assist the patient in a peaceful experience. Theoretical assertions, relational statements, and propositions. Rulin and Moore list six propositions or relational statements. Their nursing, they relate their nursing interventions with their outcomes. They are directly related to the concepts that we just defined. It is, if this nursing intervention takes place, then this outcome will happen. So let's quickly run through those. The first statement says that implementing pharmacological nursing interventions, such as administering pain medication or non-pharmacological interventions, assist the patient to the desired outcome of being free of pain. So that's very important. The second statement, if the patient outcome of experience comfort can be achieved by, relie by relieving physical discomfort, making sure that the patient has adequate rest, providing an environment that is conducive to this, ensuring contentment, and monitoring for situations that could prevent complications. The third statement, Patient, that patients will be more likely to experience dignity and respect during the end-of-life experience if loved ones and significant others aren't actually included in the decision-making processes for patient care. If the patient is treated with respect and dignity, 
and make sure that the patient's expressed needs and wants are met, then the patient is more likely to experience dignity and respect. Fourth, emotional support, recognition, and treatment of anxiety, trust and rapport between the patient and the caregivers, and guidance for the patient's families and caregivers on practical issues, and just simply having a caring patient to be physically present with that patient can, con can contribute to feelings of, of peace by that patient. The fifth statement talks about the fifth concept that we define as closeness to significant others or persons who care. And then this is achieved by participation in care by significant others, making sure that the questions and concerns of these significant others are answered by the nurse, and recognizing opportunities for the patient and the significant others to experience closeness. Therefore, if, if there's a decision that needs to be made, the nurse can recognize that maybe a collaborative decision by the patient and loved ones being made together can facilitate the feeling of closeness. And the sixth statement just kind of pulls everything together, saying that if the first five identified concepts of not being in pain, experience of comfort, experiencing experience of dignity and respect, peace and closeness, all contribute to the ultimate experience of a peaceful end of life by the terminal patient. So what is the goal of nursing? By understanding the definitions of the five concepts and the ability to measure each of the outcomes, this will aid the nurse in the evaluation of the nursing interventions and the ultimate goal of a peaceful end of life. The goal of nursing is to select and implement these nursing interventions to ensure that the patient has minimal suffering and a meaningful end of life. This is a simple schematic that shows the relationships of the concepts the top you have peaceful end of life, which is which is the ultimate goal. And underneath in yellow, you have the five concepts, not being in pain, experience of comfort, experience of dignity and respect, being at peace, and closeness to significant others. Listed under each one of these is the relation relational statements that we just went over, or the nursing interventions that help to accomplish these five things. I'm going to turn this over to my classmate, Clint, and let him wrap everything up for us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Clint. I'm going to finish up our presentation on peaceful end-of-life uh, care. Uh, there are two logical forms uh, with this theory, uh, deductive logic and inductive logic. Deductive logic is the form in which uh, specific conclusions are inferred uh, from more general premises or assertions. Uh, an example of this would be uh, someone that has COPD, uh, has shortness of breath and low oxygen saturation. So Bill has been diagnosed with COPD, therefore he has shortness of breath and low oxygen saturation. It's kind of an assumption. Uh, induction is a form of logical reasoning in which a, generalized, a generalization is induced from a number of specific observed instances. An example of this would be uh, every person in a study of COPD complains of shortness of breath, therefore everyone with COPD uh, has shortness of breath. It's more, uh, more of a generalized statement going to, specific, uh, to a more specific statement. Um, the model relationship, uh, the model has a relationship to nursing research, nursing education, and advanced nursing practice. Uh, Beckstrand, Callister, and Kirk, Kirchhoff, I don't know if that's exactly how you say it, but, uh, they surveyed critical care nurses on how to improve end of life care, uh, dealing with uh, the peaceful end of life. Uh, end of life care has also been used for continuing education topics in online journals. And the major practice implications uh, are suggested for nurses in areas where people might be nearing their end-of-life care uh, and how to manage the patient and the family. One major area of care would be, of course, hospice. Uh, you know, people in hospice are obviously nearing their end-of-life. The advanced practice nurse is responsible for identifying people in need of palliative care or hospice care uh, and they need to know what the best approach and what the best uh, 
plan of care for the patient and the family would be. Uh, failure to recognize these patients and treat them appropriately could cause them uh, and their family to have, could cause them to have an uncomfortable death and the family to have an unsettling end to, to their loved one's life. Uh, in our case study, uh, it's we did it on a, a Mr. Jack. He's a 72-year-old male that has a diagnosis of CHF, uh, CAD, and ischemic cardiomyopathy. Uh, he's had uh, cabbage times three, four stents, and also has chronic renal failure. Uh, but he has not required dialysis up, up to now. His wife takes care of him at home. Uh, and he's been hospitalized four times in the last 14 month, months for CHF exacerbations. Uh, over this time, his appetite has begun to decrease. Uh, his ability to, uh, to do his activities of daily living, uh, his, been getting in, his weakness is increasing. Uh, you know, he just hadn't been able to get up and get around and do anything. Uh, he's starting to have uh, worsening shortness of breath. His, uh, he does have oxygen ordered PRN. He's put on, uh, gained 30 pounds over the last three months and has two to three plus edema in his lower extremities. Um, He comes to the hospital with a CHF, another CHF exacerbation, uh, and the the uh, practitioner puts him in the hospital. Um, after a failed treatment plan in the hospital, uh, Mr. Jack and his family both state that they're ready for him to go home. Uh, the advanced practice nurse is now responsible for sitting down with the patient and his family uh, and discussing different uh, treatments for the home and the need for hospice care and what to expect with the hospice care and his end-of-life care. Uh, the advanced practice nurse, nurse is able to teach Mr. Jack and his family about pain management, comfort, maintaining his dignity and respect, peace, and the need for his family to be a part of his life at this final stage. Uh, after six weeks of hospice care, uh, the nurse, the advanced practice nurse, is informed by the hospice nurse that Mr. Jack has had a peaceful death, as evidenced by there was no sign of pain, uh, no complaint of pain. Uh, he stated comfort and peacefulness throughout the six weeks. Um, his dignity and, and respect was maintained, and his family was there throughout the entire experience. In summary, peaceful end of life is the achievement of five outcome indicators, which are not being in pain, experience of comfort, experience of dignity, uh, being at peace, and closeness to significant others. Uh, this theory is significant as it guides nurses in selecting and implementing interventions to alleviate suffering and help the patient achieve a meaningful end of life experience. Uh, this is a young theory with a clear relevance to clinical nursing practice. However, its usefulness needs to be further examined and refined with more study and research. That's all we have.